chapter one, and we're talking about individuals and variables. First of all, let's talk about what statistics is. Statistics is a science that involves the extraction of information from numerical data obtained during an experiment or from a sample. It involves the design of the experiment or sampling procedure, the collection and analysis of the data, and making inferences or statements about the population based upon information in a sample. So what does that mean? It means that we get information from numbers we collect, data, and then we get the information from that that allows us to say things about the data, make inferences or statements about the population the data came from. So first of all, let's talk about what individuals and variables are. When you're gathering data, the individuals are the objects described by the set of data. Now those might be people, but they could also be animals or things. Um, when you're collecting data about house sell sales, the individuals would be houses. A variable is a characteristic of the individual, and it can take on different values for different individuals. So a characteristic of people might be their age or their gender, and there are different values that that can take on. Variables we divide into two categories. We have categorical data, and that's placing an individual into a group or a category. Okay, in other words, male or female. Whereas quantitative data, quantitative variables, they take values that are numbers, and not just numbers, but numbers for which adding or averaging or subtracting or something like that makes sense. So numbers you can actually do arithmetic on. So your student ID number would actually be categorical data because even though it's a number, it's placing you into a category. So let's look at this case study, the effects of hyp hypnosis on the immune system. The objective of this was to determine if hypnosis strengthens the disease-fighting capacity of immune cells. So they took 65 college students and they checked to see whether they were easy to hypnotize or not. And 33 of them fell into the category of easily hypnotized and 32 fell into the category that they were not. And for all 65 of them, they measured the white blood cell counts. And then they had the students view a brief video about the immune system. And then they randomly assigned students to one of three conditions. So, after all 65 watched this video, they either were hypnotized and given a mental exercise, or they relaxed in a sensory deprivation tank, or nothing. They were the control group. There was no treatment given to them. And a week later, they measured all their white blood cell counts again, and they compared the two for each group. What they found was that the hypnotized group showed a larger jump in white blood cell count. And of those, the ones that were easily hypnotized showed the largest increase. So what variables did we measure here? Well, easy or difficult to hypnotize was one of the variables. That's categorical. It puts students into the category. Either they're in the category that they're easy to hypnotize or they're in the category that they are difficult to hypnotize. The group assignment, which treatment they got, that was a categorical variable 
put them into three different groups. On the other hand, the quantitative variables were the white blood cell counts, both before and after, because those are numbers and you could average those, you could add them. It makes sense to do arithmetic with them. So get another case study about weight gain and heart risk for women. The objective of this study was to recommend a range of body mass index, BMI, which is a function of weight and height, in terms of coronary heart disease risk in women. So they started the study in 1976 with over 115,000 women who were between 30 and 55 years of age. All of the women when they started had no history of previous coronary heart disease. And they measured each person's body mass, their weight. And then they were also asked for their weight at age 18. And then they took this group of women, cohort of women, just means group of women that they put together for something. They followed them for 14 years. And they just counted the number of coronary heart disease cases, both fatal and non-fatal. And overall, they had 1,292 cases over those 14 years. So what variables did we measure here? Well, we had age, weight in 1976, and weight at age 18. Those were all quantitative variables. Again, it would make sense to do arithmetic with the numbers that you have for that variable. Categorical variables, the ones that put these women into different groups. Whether or not they had coronary heart disease whether they were a smoker or a non-smoker, and whether there was a family history of heart disease. The last thing I want to talk about right now is a distribution. And distribution is something we're going to talk about a lot as we study statistics. And it just basically tells us what values a variable takes on and how often it takes these values. So for instance, we could talk about the distribution of the ages of students at TCC. And each person's age would be a different value in there. And if we had 70 students who were 18 years old, for instance, that would be 70 instances of the value 18. And we just put them all into something to give our overall distribution for that variable. It can be a table, it can be a graph, it can be a function, so we can write it as an algebraic expression or we can actually make a picture out of it. And we're going to talk a lot as we go along about different distributions and what they look like and how we can do things knowing those distributions.